Let's take this glorious gospel that we live from the neighborhood to the nation. The Power of Partnership New Birth Christian Center invites you to partner with us today. Let's look at what it means to partner with New Birth Christian Center Incorporated. It is a commitment to consistently support the spreading of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And to build a better community through mentoring, tutoring, and child care services by offering your time, which is a measure of space. The question is, do you have space to offer hope or talent? What are your strengths? New Birth Christian Center would like to know. And through your treasure, there is nothing more powerful than to give of the fruits of your labor. Together, we can make a difference.
to do it without distractions. I want to do it without worry. God, I want to do this well because you're so worthy of all the honor that's due. You've been our keeper and our supplier. You've been the lifter of our heads. You've been our strength. God, when we've been weak, you've been our bread when we're hungry, physically and spiritually. Father, you've been our everything. So we as a group of people want to do this well today. We want to to honor you well. We want to praise you well. We want to focus on you well, Father, because you're the awesome God that we need and because simply you're worthy. And if you never do another thing, God, you've been better than good to us. You've been our keeper and our supplier. We worship you today, Jesus. We pray that you not only touch us, we that are in the sanctuary, but those that will be coming on and that are on in their life rooms, God. We focus on you well today, God. We want to give you a good worship. We want to give you a worship that is due the King of glory. We worship you, God. And we pray, God, for those that are um, ill or infirmed, God, for those that are struggling in their health and in their minds, God. We, I want I, I want you to touch those, God, that are dealing with depressions and anxieties, God. But God, we celebrate you, God, from, from our reference points, God. We know in this room that you are the meter of needs, and we know in this room that you're the healer of broken hearts, and we know in this room, God, that you're a keeper of minds in the name of Jesus, that you're a lifter of burdens. So, God, based on what we know, we thank you for what you're getting ready to do. God, do a mighty work today, God, because as we focus on you well, and as we worship you well, we know God from from past accounts that you're going to show up on our behalf and we understand God that every time you enter a room things change and God temperatures change God and hope is renewed and peace is given God so today we worship you well we we come together as a collective group as the one father and we worship you because you're worthy God do the work and we give you all the glory and the honor in the name of Jesus we pray amen now let's get ready to worship Jesus, hallelujah. Let's just continue to worship him. Thank you, God, our way maker, our light in the darkness, our promise keeper. God, we lift you up on this morning. Nobody like him. He's already made the way. And for somebody, you may need him to make a way. Amen. But he's our way maker. Amen. Hallelujah. God, we lift you up on this morning and we worship you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Worship you. 
Jesus, for already making the way. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I was thinking about the message on yesterday that really just ministered to me. How many know that these messages like that God has given is just touching you at the core of your soul? And I begin to, um, Pastor Bishop was saying that, um, that God is getting ready to deliver us from a place of captivity. And he said to keep, he challenged us to keep moving on, keep moving forward. Yes. And then we come on this morning and we hear the bait of Satan. Thank you, Jesus. And he reminded us, the man reminded us um, to, to that vengeance. Vengeance belongs to the Lord. Yes. How many believe that vengeance? How many know that vengeance belongs to the Lord? We serve a God of victory. And so we just worship him on this morning. He's fighting our battles. We don't yeah. have to fight. We don't have to worry about anything because he's working it all out. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He's our defender. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.
worship a God of victory on today. Thank you, Lord. How many of you know that the enemy has already been defeated? We have a right and a reason to worship. We serve a powerful God. I'm excited about what God has been doing in this weekend. How many of you all have enjoyed this weekend? God has been really opening my eyes and strengthening my heart. And the worship has been amazing, and I'm thankful for it. I want to say thank you to the praise and worship team. I know it's time to take offering, and this is another way in this weekend that we can worship. And we opened up in prayer, and we said that we were going to worship, and we were going to worship him well. So I encourage you today to um, prepare to offer up your best gift to God. Don't let what you have to give to God be an afterthought. Think of if God uh, treated us like some have treated him as far as our giving and our time, our talent, and in our treasure. God has always placed us first. His love has always driven him to give his best, to give his only. And so in that, our, our um, only do is to return to those things uh, to him likewise. Everything that we have and every blessing that we um, got, God has given to it. I was listening to a song this morning, and the young man was saying he was up worrying about um, things in his life. And he said, but I had to step back and say the things that I, I, I worry about, I ask God for. So don't let the things that God has blessed you with become the enemy in blessing him back. Get your best gift and a Return to him the tithe and, and give to him the offering. We're going to prepare, and if you have your um, offering ready and you need an envelope, if you'll raise your hand, one of our young young uh, people will uh, bring it by. I'm excited about what God is doing. How many of you are excited about the word? And I'm excited about the healing. I'm excited about the growth and the newness and the reset. Bishop, in this past year, has been talking about reset, and sometimes it's, we just have to push the button and be able to start all over. And I'm excited about what God is, is getting ready to do. And even in your giving in this in this last of the year and the year to come, and in, in your prayer and in your praise, let's reset and let's think about and rethink about the things that God is doing. I'm excited for um, what Jesus is doing. If you have your offering ready, someone will be there to receive your offering. We serve an awesome and amazing God. Yes, he's good to us. He's been better better than good to us. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that God has done for me, when I think about the goodness of Jesus, how he kept me, how he healed me, all the things, it causes me to respond properly. Properly, When we think about the goodness of Jesus, it shouldn't cause us to, to close our hand, but then not only to open our hand, but to open our heart for what God has done for us and is doing in it. How many of y'all are ready for your next blessing? I'm ready for my what next, and I'm excited about what God is getting ready to do. One thing I know that he loves me um, completely, and that everything he has, he has my, my best in mind for, for, uh, from him to me. And so let's begin to respond for what God is doing. Sometimes you have to give for what you need God to do. You got to get the seed in the ground for what God, what you need God to do in your life, and I'm excited about that. Continue to give your, give your tithing and your offering. We serve an amazing God, a wonderful Savior. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I thank you for this morning. I thank you, God, for breath in our bodies. The miracle of life, God, we take it for granted. God, I thank you for life. I thank you for health. God, and we respond, we respond well, God. We give you the best of who we are because you've always given us the best of who you are. God, bless those who have given who have, have taken action in love and in obedience and given into the kingdom of God and trusted New Birth Christian Center to be the conduit to our neighborhoods going into our nations. God, I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for your kindness. I thank you for blessing us and keeping us, Jesus. Bless us even in the rest of this service. Let your word penetrate our hearts in the name of Jesus, and we call it done. See how long this mic stand. Prayerfully, I didn't just break it. Thank you, Dad. Just very briefly, a 
song says a wonderful change has come over me. A wonderful change has come. where you are. Sometimes, even when we don't feel like it, we've got to make a faith declaration. Sometimes, we don't feel it's important. I was talking about a song last night, and I'm, I, I, I'm not going to finish that message, but I am going to finish it soon. The Lord wanted me to talk about change this morning. Because God is changing us. God is changing us. And by faith, sometimes I've got to sing about There's power in a song. I talked about it on last night. Matter of fact, stand to your feet. We've become so used to sitting and watching that we've forgotten how to participate. Somebody say participate. New birth is so good to see you this morning. Somebody say it's good to be seen. Yes. I know you have on your masks. There's nobody else's breath to smell but yours. So if you took care of business this morning, you ain't got nothing to worry about. Come on, open that mouth and sing it a wonderful change. That's it. Has come over me. Over. That's good, that's good. Say it again. Has come over me. Come on, get ready one more time. Open it up aloud. Wonderful change has come over me. Come on. Come on, praise team and sing it with me. Wonderful. And then me and you stop singing. He's doing something in my mind. He's doing something in my body. Oh, 
the same things I used to do has come over me. I don't talk the way I used to talk. Say again, a wonderful change has come over me. God is doing the work in you, come on and bless him. Come on, if you know that change is taking place, come on and bless him. Testify to a neighbor by faith, God is changing me. God is changing me. Thank you, Jesus. You may have your seats for a moment. What a beautiful weekend we've had. What a beautiful weekend we've had. And if you've either been here or in your life room, let me tell you, we turned these cameras off Sunday night and I dismissed church and then service started. <laughs> that didn't mean anything didn't happen prior to the cameras going off. God moved in this place, but let me tell you something. Something just happened. I told the folks to go home. God bless you. We love you. Show the love of the Lord, you know. We did that. And then God showed his love on us in this place. Thank you, Jesus. There are things, tell your neighbor, good things are happening. Good things are happening. We, um, prior to service, 9.15, for, uh, I, no video was over 30 minutes, and we only have two left. But those, for those who have gotten to that part in the book, it's, this, this is a tough part we're in right now. <laughs> this is a tough part that the, the, the tough part of the book and, 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 and the tough messages. I, I know somebody's watching on so I'm, I'm be fat. I'm, I'll, I'll be back when they finish on the fence. I'm gonna, I know it'll be about Thanksgiving, Christmas time. We're going to move into that and everything going to be all right. But God is trying to heal some things in this season. And he's trying to heal some people for the rest of their lives. Amen. Hear what I'm saying. I don't want to be better for a few months. I want to be better for the rest of my days because the power of the word of God comes to make us better forever. Somebody say better forever. And some of us have to declare and confess I am better forever. Uh, I, th there are some things I'm not reliving. <laughs> And, 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 and we understand uh, you don't have the power to make me relive it. Amen. If you've been reading your book, you, 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 you know that in that book it tells you that there is no man or woman or devil that has the power to take you out of the will of God. Is that right? It, now, I, I, I know that's what the Bible says, but if you've been reading your book, is that what the book says? <laughs> uh, you don't have that power neither do you have that right and many many will go um, and, and not just in this but uh, uh, in life many will go unhealed by choice 
they will go unhealed by choice. Uh, this weekend has been more of an evangelistic weekend for me. We just been flat out having church. And understand every weekend is an evangelistic weekend for me. But there are some times that God just drops something special down for you because he's just that kind of friend. I'm, I'm, I'm going to pray before um, I preach this morning. Um, a special friend is sick and in the hospital. Uh, Bishop Filkey is in the hospital and he's battling COVID. Um, when I heard the news, you know, uh, news like that just kind of punches you pretty hard when you care about someone. Amen. I love, and, and I was talking about them last night in service. I love Bishop Filkey, Pastor Jelena. Um, and I was talking about the different pastors in my life that took me to certain levels in ministry. And Bishop and Pastor Jordana uh, took me to a new level in ministry and taught me some things in ministry. And he's in the hospital this morning. I didn't, I, I don't have an updated status report. I just know that they're requesting prayer. But how many understand that's all you need to know? <laughs> sometimes we don't have to have a whole lot of particulars sometimes we just need to know somebody needs prayer for us to go into action we like what happened what about so and so what did they say none of your business they asked for prayer amen one of also, my schoolmates from a child, Ken, requested prayer for a neighbor who on a motorcycle had a head-on accident with a truck. Um, last I heard, he wasn't responding. And I'll talk to him today uh, at some point today. And he may be watching now. I don't know. But hear me, there is a lot going on. If you say, I don't have anything to pray for, you don't have a prayer life. And neither do you have a clue. On our school campuses, two kids start fighting. One stabs the other. new birth if you don't understand that we have something to pray for we are really missing it and we are not going to miss it amen we are not going to miss it we need revival in our families amen yours mine and ours we need God to do some things for us I, I listen I am going to see the hand of God move in this season I am going to see the hand of God move in this season I'm going to pray for Bishop Filkey but if there's someone that you know we're going to stand back to our feet and after I pray we're going to go to Luke the ninth chapter If there's someone in your life who is sick, I'm, I'm, I'm only praying for one thing right now, and that's the spirit of infirmity. If there's someone in your life that's sick that you know you, you, you want the Lord to touch them in their bodies, I want you to raise your hand, whether it's you or whether it's someone you know. God sees and God knows 
God is able. And Pastor Luanda said it last night. God is willing. Not only can God do it, God wants to do it. It is his will to see his people healthy and whole. The writer said, I shall not die. And I speak this to Bishop's hospital room. I speak it to the floor where he is. I speak it to the unit where he is. Not die, but live. Not die, but live. I declare in the name of the Lord Jesus, Bishop Filkey shall not die, but live. God, we know that there is a will beyond our will, and we ask your will. But you gave us, you gave us faith to speak. So by faith, we declare today, Bishop Filkey shall not die, but live. He's made declarations for years. He said, God, if we would release our faith, you would release your power. So in this room and from this room, we release our faith in the name of Jesus. And we ask that over that hospital, you release your power. I declare an open heaven over that hospital in the name of the Lord Jesus. I declare an open heaven over West Coast right now in the name of Jesus. I declare an open heaven over the Filky family in the name of Jesus. I declare an open heaven over Pastor Jadena right now in the name of Jesus. And we declare healing. You said in your word, it is the children's bread. Now we receive what belongs to us right now. We exercise our right now faith. We exercise our right now faith. God, for everyone under the sound of my voice, whether present or whether in their life rooms, I speak the word of healing in the name of Jesus. Healing to bodies, healing to organs, healing to sickness and disease, healing over arthritis, healing over cancer, healing, we speak healing, and every enemy of God that exalts itself every high thought that exalts itself every sickness that exalts itself every manner of disease that exalts itself above the knowledge of who God is you gave us the power to cast down every wicked imagination God so those right now who are wrestling in their mind we cast it down for mental sickness and disease, we cast it down in the name of Jesus. COVID, we stand against you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Kidney disease, we stand against you in the name of Jesus. High, high blood pressure and heart disease, we stand against you in the name of Jesus. Blood disorders, we stand against you in the name of Jesus. We declare your people are healed. We declare your people are healed. We declare our families are healed and that no weapon formed against us prospers. Come on, open that mouth and call on him like you know how. Come on, open that mouth and talk to God for yourself. Open your mouth and declare it over your home. Declare it open heaven over your home. Declare it open heaven over your family. Declare an open heaven over your ministry. Open that mouth. Open that mouth. Open that mouth. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. We believe you. We trust you. Thank you, Jesus. We believe you. We trust you. We say it is so. 
Come on, magnify the name of the Lord in this place. And we declare in the name of the Lord Jesus, it is well. We declare in the name of the Lord Jesus, it is well. We declare in the name of the Lord Jesus, it is well. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. While you're standing, take your Bibles and go to Luke, the ninth chapter. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we bless your name. I talked about this not long ago. But there's something the Lord wants to bring to our attention. Some eight days after these sayings, he took Peter, James, and John, went up on a high mountain to pray. While he was praying, the, the appearance of his face became different. His clothing became white and gleaming. And behold, two men were talking with him, and they, uh, and, and they were Moses and Elijah, who appearing in glory, were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions had been overcome with sleep. They were overcome with sleep, but when they were fully awake, they saw his glory. The two men standing with him, and as these were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it's good for us to be here. Let us make three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah, not realizing what he was saying. While he was saying this, a cloud formed and began to overshadow them, and they were afraid as they entered the cloud. Then the voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my son, my chosen one. Listen to it. And when the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone, and they kept silent and reported to no one in those days any of the things which they had seen. You may have your seat while you do tell your neighbor, he's changing me. He's changing me. <laughs> you see, it's okay to acknowledge I need a good change. It, it, it's okay to tell the Lord, I, I, need, I need you to change me. That, with that said, that doesn't mean that you're a bad person because you need the Lord to change you. I think I'm a pretty good fella. And I need the Lord to change me. A amen. None of us should be exempt from change. And none of us should be afraid of the change of the Lord. The, the, the change of who? Now, just trying to change to change might not be the best thing for you. But there is a change that God gives by way of prayer. By way of what? If you're not praying, you're not changing. Amen. If you're not praying, you're not changing. If something is happening in your life and you are changing without prayer, it may not be the change that God desires for you. You may have changed jobs or are thinking about changing a job because you don't like your boss. And God is saying, I, I didn't tell you to change. I was getting ready to give you your boss's position. Well, I, I, even, I even took a cut in pay because I was tired and I needed a change. And God was saying, I was getting ready to give you a change, but you didn't talk to me about it. Somebody say, pray about it. Worry about nothing. Pray about everything. 
We're sitting and we're worrying and we're upset and, and, and mind going to and fro. And the last thing we, we've talked to everybody, everybody on Facebook know your business. And you've not said one word to God who has all the answers. They can put all the nice quotes on Facebook they want to. Jesus is still the answer for the world today. You see, in, 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 in this place, and, and, and especially for the church and those who believe in God and those who name the name of Christ, Facebook about to cut a whole lot of folks off. I'm just telling you. So when it happened, you don't say, oh, my God, what happened? It's happening now. Because they would allow you in the world. You see, in this world that we live, you can believe in anything else. You, 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 you can celebrate anything else except Jesus. You see, Jesus, two things to the world. Jesus is the biggest joke and Jesus is the biggest offense. So if you name his name, then what are you to the world? To the world, you're following Jesus as a big joke and a big offense. But prayer, you see, because everything is not going to change. There are things, let, let, let me help somebody this morning. There are things in our world that are not going to change. The question is, can God change me in an unchanging world? I need the change of God in my life to deal with 2021 situations. I need a current change. And you, you, you see, uh, if you have a car that has a computer, and if your car doesn't have a computer in it, uh, uh, you ain't driving. Pretty much everybody's car has some kind of chip in it. Unless you have something from the 60s. Or early 70s. Pretty, pretty much it has some kind of chip in it. If you are driving something newer in the last 10 years or so, every once in a while, if you have a navigation system in your car, how many of you have a navigation system in your car? Every once in a while, that system in your car, you've got to take it in and have the navigation system what? Updated. Or what? changed because since the last time you've had that update streets have been added exits on freeways have been added communities have been built now for the price of that change some of I, I, you know I hear you you know they want $300 to change that. I'm going to just roll with this old map. <laughs> you see, because sometimes the cost of change is greater than many of us want to pay. I'm preaching right now. The cost of revelation. Because there is a cost to revelation. You see... I can, I, can, I can get a library of Miles Monroe books, A Man of Revelation. I can read them from cover to cover every day of my life. And all, all the revelation I'm going to get is Miles Monroe's revelation. Is that right? If I want the revelation that God has for Charles Ware Sr., then I've got to hit my face. And I've got to get in his word and allow his word to be revealed in me. 
Jesus, Jesus, this is eight days when the 27th verse says it's eight days after him talking to the disciples where he asked the question, who do men say I am? And then he said, who do you say I am? <laughs> it's one thing to know what people said because as many different people as you know, you may have that many differing opinions as to who you are. I could ask everyone right now, what color suit am I wearing? And some, and I promise you, I'd have more than one answer. Why? Because there's more than one view. There's more than one perception. But the question is, what is the view that really matters? Because everybody's view about me really doesn't matter. Jesus was saying, what is the community, community's view about me? What, 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 who, who do they say I am? Then he gets personal. Okay, now that they, they, they said, who do you say I am? Peter says, you're Christ, son of the living God. Peter, that, that's, that's not a flesh and blood thing. That's a kingdom thing that just happened. You see, as people of God, we've got to stop missing kingdom moments or taking them lightly. We don't take notes in church anymore because it's not that important to us. You know, we watch church on Facebook seven days a week, so why do I need to come to church and take notes? But you see, the very revelation that you need, that's why your local church is important. Listen, I thank God that they have church on TV all through the week. Some people need that. I thank God. But you got to be careful when you're eating at 20 tables. You, 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 you have to be careful when you're consuming everybody's food. Because everybody's food, while it may taste good today, tonight it might make you sick. That's why you should be mostly invested in your local church. Somebody say my own church. <laughs> you see, if you are a member of New Birth Christian Center, New Birth Christian Center should get the most and best of your investment. I'm not talking about your money. I'm talking about time, talent, and treasure. New Birth Christian Center should get the best of your prayers. Yes, you, we, we are to pray for our families and our nation. But you see, once we got our family on lock with our prayer, the next thing you ought to be praying for is your church. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hands, but how many of you prayed for your church this week? How many of you prayed for your pastors this week? God bless Benny Hinn. I know he's a man of God. If you ain't called my name out in prayer, something wrong with you. <laughs> and I'm not talking about that prayer. God save Bishop. He ain't right. If you don't believe I'm right and you're a member of this church, you really need to be praying and fasting. Jesus tells his disciples, uh, after Peter's revelation, he says that that's not a flesh and blood thing that's happening. You see, as, as brothers and sisters, we've got to move past flesh and blood. As brothers and sisters in Christ, 
We've got to move past flesh and blood and be able to walk in the revelation that God has called us to. Amen. As brothers and sisters in Christ, we've got to look at you, not to see if I can find some fault with Sister Carmen. Let me see, Sister Carmen. Is that a C on her mask? Mm, that probably means she's been spending a lot of cash. Mm, that's, that's what I feel in my spirit about Sister Carmen. When God is saying, where did, in the world did you get that revelation from? Because under that mask with that C is a beautiful smile. And if I got close enough to Sister Carmen, she'd reveal that smile to me. I know everybody wants six feet. But if I got close enough to Sister Carmen and she took off that mask, I go, go ahead, Sister Carmen. You can take it off just for a minute. Just, just pow. Just like, look at that smile. If you got close enough to her and didn't have your own revelation of her, but ask God, God, show me Sister Carmen. She's a, she's under the same roof. She's worshiping in the same house. God might say on Thursday, you know what? Call Sister Carmen's name out in prayer because under that pretty smile, she's going through something today. Is that right? We ask for a revelation for out there. When was the last time you asked God for a revelation inside your own house? Oh, good preaching, Bishop. You're praying for God to give you a revelation because such and such couple is going through. What about the revelation for your own house? That one was quiet. You want the revelation as to how to deal with somebody else's children. While you're praying about that revelation, your child going out the window. Mm. You see, I get calls from pastors across the country who call sometimes to ask questions, who call sometimes just to talk. But you know who I pray for first? New Earth Christian Center. You know what my prayer is on a daily basis? God, help me lead your people in the way that you would want me to. Give me wisdom today. Give me strategy today. Give me your strength. Give me your help. Because you know what? Some days I don't meet God's expectations. That's okay. You don't have to say amen. Some days you don't either. <laughs> but can I pray and ask God to show me your way? Show me your will. You see, God is trying to get us to that place, whether leaders of ministry, leaders in ministry, or leaders in home, leaders in your community, leaders on your job. If you lead, you need wisdom. He tells them in the 27th verse, uh, to, to, he, he, uh, in the 27th verse, I, I say to you truthfully, there are some standing here who won't taste death until they see the kingdom of God. You won't die until you see God's kingdom. Peter just had a revelation he had shared. Listen, if God showed it to you, don't be afraid to share it when he tells you to. If God has shown you something that you're supposed to tell me, don't you hold that in. The thing that he shows you, you see, because the thing that he shows you, he ought to be putting something in me to already receive what he showed you. 
Those of you who know me know me well enough to say, uh, to, to, to know that if it's something that's not from God, I'm going to say, hold on just a second. Whoa, whoa. Well, somebody said, well, Bishop, that makes me a little nervous to say anything to you. It should. We should always be cautious of just having a word for somebody. I don't give a word just because I feel like saying something. I better be careful because you belong to God. Today, the word that God gave me for New Birth Christian Center, I better be careful. I better know that what I'm giving you is what God gave me to give you because somebody is going to be impacted by today's word for the rest of your life. He tells them you won't die until you see the manifestation. And, and then eight days later, uh, they go up to pray. To, they, they, they go to the mountain to pray. And he's taken with him three, Peter, James, and John, his three. There were the 70, there was the 12, and there were the three. Who chose them? Jesus chose them. What is that saying? Every person has the right to choose your three. Just make sure that choice is God-given. Every person should have the 12. You just understand within that 12, one of them is, is, is going to betray you. For every 12 people in your life, one of them is apt at any moment to betray you. You see, because you can have the crowd around you one day until you say, eat my flesh, drink my blood. That's at that point where folks say, oh, did he just say what I think he said? Eat my what? Drink my who? No, it's time, it's time to go now. And then you'll turn around and look at the 12 and you'll say, oh, are you leaving too? And then somebody out of that 12 will say, well, where, if we leave you, where are we going? We trust the ministry. These are the 12. Then out of those 12, he chooses three. Listen, I have the right to choose who walks with me. And if I choose my three, you shouldn't be on the, on, on the perimeter saying, well, you know, God said he was supposed to choose me. If he would have chose me, he would have got a prayer warrior for real. Find three people you can hold yourself accountable to. Find three people who can speak back into you. <laughs> Find three people who aren't afraid of you. Find three people that you're comfortable enough with that you can ask their opinion, their godly opinion. But you see, we don't, we don't really want that. What we want is to be able to say, you know what? This happened and this happened and this happened and then you want them to be able to say, you know what, I knew it. I knew it. How many understand you can always find an agreeing partner? But sometimes you need some people in your life who are willing to say, well, you know, Bishop, I, I kind of don't see it that way. So then we can come together and reason. Jesus takes them to the mountain. And as he prays, in King James it says, the visage of his countenance was changed. Woo! 
In this version, while he's praying, the appearance of his face became different. You see, when you have a real prayer life to people, you begin and you should begin to look different. Somebody say different. It's okay to look different sometimes. It's okay. Hear what I'm saying. It's okay for, 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 for in people's eyes you to appear different. When you develop a real prayer life, people should be saying of you, you know what? She's changed. <laughs> yeah, you, you know, well, you know bro, you changed. You know, you're not hanging out like you used to. Something changed about you. And it's not even for you to explain every time you change. It's for you to keep on praying and allow God to speak on your behalf. Am I changing? Yes, I am. Are you changing? Yes, you should be. If you're praying, you should be changing. If you're not praying, you're not changing the way God wants you to change. That's the question, you see, because there's change and then there's godly change. I want to experience godly change. I've had enough Charlie change in my life. And Charlie change most of the time ends with bad results. Amen. But what I found out is that godly change. <laughs> and, and, and everybody can't take godly change. That's why he only took three with him. Everybody wouldn't have been able to handle what went on on that mountain. Sometimes you've got to climb above where you are. Get to the place where you can get into the face of God. Where he can change you while you pray. Because everybody down where you came from can't handle what God is doing in you and through you and with you while you pray. Tell your neighbor, keep on praying. God is changing you. Keep on praying. God is changing your marriage. Hear what I'm saying. Husband, hear what I'm saying. Wife, God can so change you. Stop looking at the other partner. Pray. Let God change you. I stopped praying for God to change Lawanda a long time ago. <laughs> I, st I, I stopped that a long time ago. Because what I found out was that there were two of us in that bedroom. God just let her look in the mirror and see your ways. God said, no, you get up and look in the mirror and look at yourself. And you keep on praying. Listen, stop praying for everybody else sometimes. Put your prayer list away. Did Bishop just say what I thought he said? Oh, yes, he did. Put your prayer list away and spend some time. Spend the week. Focus on yourself. <laughs> While Jesus was praying, God was changing him. You see, and here we have the revelation of the Son. You see, the Son can't shine through until you get in touch with the Father. This was, this was the manifestation of the revelation that Peter had. You see, and we prayed and walked away from our prayer closet and were not looking for a manifestation of the revelation that God gave us. I'm looking for God to be everything he said he would be. 
I'm looking for God to show up in ways I can't even imagine. I'm looking. Listen here what I'm saying. I'm looking so when I finish praying, you're going to look at me and you're going to say, what did God do to that boy? I mean, you're going to say, man. I, I. You're going you, you, to look at your children. You see, don't stop praying for your children. I've been talking to our children about prayer and about worship and about how you operate in service, what you should be doing. Our, our children shouldn't be looking at us. They should be learning how to clap and raise their hands and, and sing their songs and not be afraid to shout out in church. Yeah! Jesus! We've forgotten how to call on Jesus. Some have been sitting in front of your screen for almost two years now and you've forgotten or because you're ashamed to cry out in your house. But there must be a holy boldness that comes over you and like the blind man who needed to see will call out, Jesus! Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, son of the living God, I need a miracle in my home. I need a miracle in my life. I need a miracle in my finances. I need a miracle in my church. Jesus. Somebody say, call on him. I'm not afraid to call on him and say, Jesus, we need a miracle in our city. Jesus, we need a miracle in our nation. Jesus! When is the last time you called out? I know some of you say, well, I don't, I don't really pray like that. And I'm not telling you that you have to. But what I am saying is however you call out. My pastor's wife, Linda Young, was one of the most silent people I knew. But had one of the loudest voices. Could change an atmosphere just walking in. Sitting down in the restaurant talking to a waitress that you could tell had a bad day and by the end of her service was blessed and asking for prayer. But I still believe there are those who were not afraid to call on the name of the Lord. You see, when we were young, and yeah, we didn't have to do all that tarrying. I, you, you, <laughs> We got saved every Sunday. You knew what they was looking for, so you know what show to put on. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you're getting close. You're getting. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's like the choo-choo train. Little, little engine that could. choo 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 You're getting close. choo choo you call, he come on, you're getting close, you're getting close. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Turn loose, let go, hold on, hold fast, turn it loose. No. Now you stop my train, I gotta start all over. Thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Here it come, put a little spirit with it. God is saving him and purging him. Get up Sunday night, wake up Monday morning, the same little old hellion. Got in so much trouble that week, daddy boy, you know, you know, you know what's happening. Don't worry about it, I'll handle it on Sunday. Thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you. But I'm going to tell you something. What it taught us is not to be afraid to call on the name of Jesus. What it took away from us as a child was the fear of calling out. So I never had a problem in the service when they said, open your mouth and bless him. I thank you, Jesus. 
Why? Because as a child, I spent it on my knees and on my face. I was practicing for something and didn't even know what I was practicing for. Was it necessary? No. Did it help? Yes. Sometimes you need to gather your children around you in, in, in worship service and just rock with them for a minute. Clap with them for a minute. Why? Because you're teaching them something. You're taking a fear away from a shame because the enemy wants to lay shame on our children and our young people to worship God in his presence. But when you will unafraid begin to pray and ask God to reveal himself in an awesome way, he will not let you down. They're saying, look, 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 we're, we're, we're in the presence of God and God is doing something. And I, I just don't know. You see, people are not going to be able to handle your, what, what, what God is doing in you. Peter didn't know what to do, so he started making up something. This is good. Let's build temples. He saw the prophet standing there and said, oh, my God, this, this is a God moment. We got to mark this with, 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 with temples. With memorials. Listen, there are some things that if God were to show you, nobody would believe you anyway. You can erect whatever temple you want. They wouldn't believe you. Look, this is where Jesus turned into. And, I, and this is where Jesus was revealed to me as the son of God that God told me. This is where the manifestation happened. I mean, when I, when I tell you, Jesus changed into something totally different. And that's what they say, you know. You know, I thought Peter had a problem. I saw him tip up, you know, he, you know, he, he, you know, he was sneaking around the tree with them. Because that's too crazy to believe. The change God will give you to the unbeliever or the onlooker will be crazy, too crazy for them to believe because they didn't see it happen themselves. Hear what I'm saying? Just because you didn't see my transformation doesn't mean it didn't take place. Just because I didn't see yours doesn't mean it didn't take place. But something ought to happen if we have both been transformed, if we have both been renewed, if we have both been overshadowed by the Holy Ghost like Elizabeth and Mary. When we get close to each other, something ought to jump inside. You see, if we are praying like we are supposed to, new birth, when we come together, something. I ought to leave with more than I came. Second Kings, the second chapter. Elijah was about to depart. I'm about done. Elijah was about to depart. He asked Elijah, what, what is it you want? Because Elijah, Elijah knew what was about to happen. Elijah Elijah told him, I want a double portion of your anointing. Be careful what you ask for. Be, ca be careful what you ask God for. Somebody said, Bishop, I want, I, if, if, if that's the Lord's blessing, that's what I want. You driving that car, that's what I want. I said, then I'm going to pray for you. That 1983 Cutlass with the big old dent. I'm going to pray for you. The Monte Carlo that you had to pray every time you stopped. You had muscles in one leg. You had to pray every time it stopped. I'm going to pray that you have to catch the bus every day for work. 
Well, wait a minute. No, that's, that's the anointing. That, and you won't double that. Listen, there are some people who are doing some great things that I don't ask God for. Because number one is covetous. I just ask God for what he has for me. And if I see someone that's in my life, you see, because those kind of blessings come from relationship. <laughs> you don't get, you, you see, because if you walk with me close enough and hear my story, because I don't tell all my story all the time. And you probably ain't heard all my story. But if you walk close enough with me, you may get my life in parts. The closer you get to me, the more you find out about me. But you see, you can get so close to someone that you can find out something you don't want to know. And you don't know how to handle it. On the video this morning, he was talking about being offended by your leaders. I'm telling you, you need to read the book. Watch the video. He talked about being offended by those who lead you. Being hurt by someone who is supposed to be covering you. But if you walk close enough with them, you can look at them and say, uh, David told Saul, look, I could have killed you twice. I didn't because you're the Lord's anointed. Even while Saul was trying to kill him. David killed Goliath because Saul wanted him dead. But something happened when people began to sing more about David than they began to sing about Paul, or Saul, excuse me. And the leader he called, he, he, you see, in relationship, by the end of their relationship, he was saying, my father, my father. He never stopped calling Saul father. Elijah was telling Elijah when he saw him going up, Father! Somebody say relationship. You can't, listen, you can't walk with everybody. And if you're going to cover somebody, you've got to be careful and protect your relationship. The only way the double portion is going to fall to you is that you walk close enough that when that one who's leading you goes up, the mantle falls to you. My question is, do you see what the Lord is doing? Elisha was close enough. Elisha was close enough to Elijah. And because they were bound by relationship and covenant. Relationship, covenant, and loyalty. Because that, that, that L word is the word we don't want to hear anymore. Somebody said loyalty is for dogs. But oh no. Loyalty is just as needed today. And it's needed more today than ever. David was loyal to Saul. Even when he could have killed him. The man who said he killed him. <laughs> he didn't even kill him. But the man who went back with the report of Saul's death, thinking it was going to give him a leg up with David, said, you know, he asked me to kill him. David said, what? You put forth your hand to touch the Lord's anointing? 
David called another man with the sword and said, now you kill him. You be careful what you do with your sword. You, 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 you better be careful what you're doing with your sword. Because God is saying, who, who gave you the authority to even put your mouth on it? Who gave you the authority to even put your mouth on it? For that, God will deal with it. We heard it this morning. It, it, vengeance is mine and I'm going to repay it. Somebody say, let God do it. You stay in prayer. You be changed. You wait for the mantle that's supposed to fall to you. You stand to your feet. Somebody say changed. Beginning of the year, I began singing a song. God is doing a great work. He's doing a great work in me. <laughs> At the beginning of the year, when I began to talk about reset, the reset of the Lord, I didn't necessarily know what I was talking about. I, just, I was just saying what God wanted me to say. But the manifestation of his word, the manifestation of his word, it is amazing what the Lord is doing in his people in this season. Paul Morton sang that song, Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without me. God, give us the revelation. From that revelation, there are some things some of you are going to begin to see. Some of the first things are going to be about you. God, show me me. Hear what I'm saying? In this season, I'm focusing on me. Yes, I'm still pastoring New Birth Christian Center. Yes, I, 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 I'm, I'm still praying for every member by name that I know. Yes, I'm still praying for houses and marriages and finance. I'm, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. But my number one focus, me. Because God has called us to move forward. Bishop told us to open those curtains. And out of obedience, we open those curtains. When you ride out of here, you look. You, see, you, 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 you can see that there are things happening. Because I believe in what God has said for this ministry. And I believe God has sent believers who love him and who love his work. And who love their church and who love their pastors. Amen. Hear me, New Birth. God is not going to fail. <laughs> you see, this is November the 6th, 7th. This is November the 7th. December 1st, we were supposed to lose this property. December 1st, we were supposed to be gone. Not because we didn't have the money. Because they didn't want to sign an extension. But where they said no, God said yes. While they were saying no, I was laying on my face. I was talking to God. And understand, I, would, I was going to be okay with whatever God said. We were getting close because I wasn't going to wait until December. I was going to move in June. We were going to move in June. Hear what I'm saying? But God gave us an answer. Because I ain't moving in the rain. Not if I don't have to. But in that time, God gave us an answer. All we had to do was stay in his presence. 
And where one person, and I'm, talk, I'm, I'm talking to somebody right now, where one person said no, God was already lining up somebody to say yes. He just wanted to know if we'd stay in his face to get what we needed. There's a yes coming to some of you in this room where some folk have told you no. There is a yes. There is a yes that's on the way. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, there's someone watching who needs a yes. The world has been telling them that they're losing. I declare in the name of the Lord Jesus, there is a win coming up. God, there are those in this room who have been hearing no. I thank you because they're on their way to your yes. And God, as we stay in your face, the change that comes for a lifetime, the change that happens in one moment, we ask more than anything, more than property and more than, 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 than fixing up and maintain. Let us see your face in this place. Wherever you would have us be, if it's not here, let us see your face wherever you have new birth. Let us experience the trueness of who you are, not just church service. God, we trust you. For those who need change in this room, there are those in this room and those watching, you need change in your life. I want you to raise your hand right where you are. I declare the change of a lifetime to everyone who has their hand raised. God, meet them at the point of their need, wherever they need change. Meet them at their home. Meet them in their secret place. Meet them at the point, at, at the place and area of their altars. Meet them. God, as they drive in their cars, meet them as they sleep at night by way of dreams and visions. Meet them. Meet us as a congregation that we might experience the power of the Holy Ghost together. We might experience Jesus' joy together. We might experience the power of oneness together. We might experience this powerful next that you have for us together. Give us to know the needs of the house and the needs of those who are in the house. Give us what to pray and when to pray it. Give us what to say and when to say it. By the power of your Holy Ghost, in your precious, perfect, and matchless name, Jesus, we thank you. Now come on, give God glory. Come on and give him glory. A wonderful change has come over me. A wonderful change has come over me. Thank you, Lord. You may have your seats. Very quickly, I'm going to ask everyone who can for an offering of $75. I'm going to be the first. First of all, the tithe belongs to God. If you've not given God the tithe, give to God what belongs to God. Release to God what belongs to God. Because he already has everything we need. Somebody blessed me with $100 this morning. I'm, I'm getting ready to give that an offering. I got, matter of fact, I got blessed last night before I left. I got blessed this morning when I came to church. I'm blessed. But I'm a giver too. Amen. The Lord told me not to receive one offering Friday and Saturday night. Do we have needs? Yes, we do. There are things that we have to have done to the roof. If you, if you look, there's work that's going on on the campus. 
And everything we do costs us. There's some electrical work we're going to have to have done. We were getting ready to start receiving our Thanksgiving things, and our, our refrigerator went out. Now, I'm not here to nickel and dime. The refrigerator is going to get fixed or we'll get a new one. Amen. They're working on it. The Lord put it on someone's heart to give five, to give dinners for five families. A amen. This is the time we're receiving uh, for, 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 for those dinners. If you buy yourself a turkey, buy somebody else a turkey. For Thanksgiving, I cook at least three turkeys. And they good. But I also, after I buy my three, I buy three for somebody else. Why? Because I'm going to share in the blessing of the Lord. As the Lord blesses me, I'm going to bless somebody else. I want you to release your faith concerning giving right now. Those who are going to give by whatever apps, if you're watching, be a blessing. If you're in the house, you need an envelope, you can lift your hand, they'll bring you one. Be a blessing. The praise and worship team is getting ready to come. We're going to keep on giving while we praise. Amen. I, listen, I thank God for New Birth Christian Center's praise and worship team. And I know they have some special announcements. Uh, so, so, so you all wait for these special announcements that's coming on. If, if you're watching, wait uh, because they have some special announcements concerning some of the things that are going to uh, be happening at your new birth, at our new birth Christian center. God bless you. We love you. Show the love of the Lord. Come on, praise and worship.
you, Lord. Before we have a seat just for a minute, stay with me, Mr. Eames. Before we uh, dismiss, I wanted to read you all something. Um, yes, you know, uh, Elder Ellis is, is not only um, our church leader, one of our church leaders, but he's also um, a community activist. And he's touched over the years um, uh, young men and young women of all ethnicities, but the focus has been on uh, young people, boys, girls, young men and women uh, of color. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Ellis, Elder and Minister Ellis, um, for some years went to um, Indiana and, and worked there, and he has been the CEO of the Girls and Boys Club of America in different states, an amazing man. And so why am I talking about this? Because I'm very excited to announce to you, I received this email, and it says um, that he is um, the, the Stockton chapter of the NAACP has named Mr. Lincoln Ellis Sr. Um, or is inducting him into the Hall of Fame for the NAACP. Y'all put your hands together. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? Yeah, get, stand on your feet for a little bit because whether he has or is going to, um, possibly some of the, even the things that have been implemented over the years, um, he may not have his hands on it now, but may have been implemented for to benefit your children. And I couldn't let this day go by um, without mentioning this. And so it's going to be a virtual event, um, and it's going to be held on November the 20th. And for those of you who would like to log on or participate, I know the tickets are $25 a piece. And there are um, there are those that are freedom fighters, but but our Mr. Lincoln Ellis is being inducted, our own yes, into the Hall of Fame. If you just do some research on him, it will blow your mind the types of things that he's done throughout the nation over the years and is so well deserved of this. So those of you who would like information to log on and to be a part of this, as many of us that can, let's do that and support him and the things that he has done and he's going to done do in the community. Bishop, did you have something that you want to say? Oh, oh, let me give you the mic. He always has. Thank you all for this. Appreciate it, your love. And the inspiration of God to empower us to be able to be servants and have the luxury of giving back to his people. Truly indeed, it's only through the blessings of God. If you are on, because I think we're still live, if you're in your life room and you say, we want to know how to be a part of this, either um, go to our website, leave us a message, you um, email someone. But as many of us that can be on this line, we need you to support a man that has not only supported New Birth, but has supported the Stockton community, the Modesto community, the Lodi community. When I tell you there are programs that are in place and that he has fought, especially for children of color, that to benefit our children, we need to uh, show up in force and celebrate this amazing man of God. Mr. Lincoln Ellis, we love you. You're amazing. 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 I'm not done yet. You may have your seats. If you are a, um, in the last couple of years, if you have in some way um, with the new birth community development, if you've given um, through your labors, if you've worked or if you've um, given in finance to support some of the things that we've done, whether it's um, uh, the toy drive, um, toy drive, turkey, um, the learning to love event, which was sponsored by um, uh, Theo's um, organization or through the church. If you've done something like that in the last two years, please stand to your feet. So what's she doing? I want to reach you something. You got an email that I thought that you needed to hear. Thank you. December the 20, December 2018, you, New Birth Community Development and New Birth Christian Center, adopted my two girls for Christmas. I think about the generosity you showed to me 
and my girls and make gifts possible for them in a time where I was unable to. I had just left an abusive, an abusive drug using husband and only had the clothes on our back and a car. Your prayers and generosity lives in my family still to this day. I have a full-time job now. I've been healed from abuse and my oldest daughter has made me a grandma. My youngest is now 14 and a freshman in high school and a strong, is a strong and confident young lady. You gave me my power back. And that Christmas, I never got a chance to say thank you, but I will never forget you all. God bless you. She will go unnamed, but I needed you to know that for every back-breaking load or, or turkeys you haul, uh, Minister Marilyn and, and Brittany and all of you that are in here, for every time you went into your pocket, for, for everything that you've done, sometimes you need to hear. Even Jesus asked, you know, when the one came back to say, where are the nine at? But there was an extra blessing for the one that came back. For those of you that have done things in, in love and all of those types of things, um, I wa she wanted to say thank you and that she's whole now. She has a good job. Her babies are doing good. She's not afraid anymore. She's not abused anymore. And she says that year, because of you, it brought the beginning of her healing. So I just want to say I love you. Let's give everybody a hand in the room. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing, and, and you are champions like Mr. Ellis. He's just been doing it longer than we have, but you are champions, and sometimes even if it's just that $5 or that turkey that you donated or whatever you did, God sees you, and I want to say bless your heart. Okay, let me keep moving because we have some exciting news regarding the holidays. Michael Anderson and Tisha McConnor wedding is on Thursday, um, November the 11th, at 1 p.m. and um, Letitia has opened, y'all give them a hand, this is some good news. So this Thursday, this Thursday at one o'clock here in the sanctuary, I'm inviting you all out. She said that I could, and she, we're gonna celebrate them on Thursday at one o'clock as they um, uh, take their vows in the in the face of heaven and those that love them that are around. So give them a hug and celebrate them after service and let them know um, that you're excited for them. This is good news. Uh, bad news comes, you know, just continually, but sometimes we get so overwhelmed with the negative that we forget the positive so that's something the Lord laid on my heart and that's what we're gonna do so on on Thursday at 1 o'clock here on the campus is a wedding y'all let's celebrate on Saturday um, uh, the women's uh, gathering is gonna be here at 11 o'clock and Bishop has just come on in ladies and he's having himself a gathering at 11 o'clock with the brothers he wants to meet the brothers um, right here at the same time women we will be in the sanctuary we're gonna be talking about gracefully broken you're gonna hear some testimonies that is going to blow you away men you're gonna be on the other side of the campus in room 7 meet Bishop and the uh, male leaders and y'all gonna talk about whatever you talk about I'm concerned about the ladies being gracefully broken but everybody's gonna be here and we're regathering ourselves and being strengthened as we go into um, this new year. Um, uh, uh, Brittany and Theo, y'all come on up. They are going to um, do final announcements and then uh, Theo is going to close out in prayer. I think we have another meeting in room seven, but they'll tell you all about that. How's everybody doing? Good, good, good. Okay, so you know last week we had the meeting for Home for the Holidays, correct? Okay, great turnout. There were some people there, I'm quite sure, that wasn't there last Saturday that's actually here now. So we're going to have this last meeting uh, over in Room 7. Um, so we're just asking that you all just give us like 20 minutes. Um, I'm just going to come and just be honest and just say this. Okay, I'm new here, so I can kind of get away with some stuff a little bit. I, you know, I, I hope I can. New Birth family, I'm asking you for your time. I know this is like short notice uh, for the home for the holidays, but I'm just asking you all just for your time. So can I have your time with the, raise your hand or hand claps or something like that? Some people was like, no, I got some chicken. That's in the, and we going home to eat. No, you ain't getting no time. I got chicken too, okay? No. But um, no, seriously, I just really just uh, just asking for your time. Me and um, Sister Brittany just asking for your time so we can just discuss this and just um, 
put the glue uh, like together, uh, put the pieces together, just glue everything together. So, so yeah, we're we're very excited about it. Uh, I will, Pastor L, I will do so. Uh, so, home for the holidays. Actually, I'm gonna do this because she and I know she was hoping that I wouldn't do this, but I like putting people on the spot. So, Miss Brittany, because I'm getting, getting a little camera shy too. How y'all doing out there in TV land? Y'all good? Okay, cool. Okay, so you, you ready? You ready for this? Okay, here you go. So um, Home for the Holidays, this year the theme is Back Home Together. Um, and you guys know that we are so happy to be back in the house of the Lord, back together to see each other's faces. And so that's really what it's going to be centered around. Um, we're asking each of you to come who is willing and interested to come with your talent. Let us know what that is. And um, we have some special things planned. We have caroling planned. Um, if you want to just uh, stand out and carol outside, we have some Christmas carols that we're going to be doing. We have um, on Sunday mornings, on starting on the 28th, we're going to be doing um, hot chocolate in the mornings and maybe a little pastry or something. Um, and so even if you're not able to participate and just want to stop in fellowship before a service in the morning, we're going to be doing some of that. And then we're going to have presentations every Sunday up into Christmas Sunday. Um, and so that starts November the 28th up to Christmas Sunday. And on top of that, we are having um, a special Sunday night service on December the 19th. So it's going to build up. Uh, there is going to be different presentations, and then on Sunday, December 19th, we are going to celebrate back home together, home for the holidays. Um, and I don't know about y'all, but back home together for me is it's just something different about this year that I'm so super excited about. So um, in, in about 20 minutes after service is over, Give us 20 minutes to get it together, and then come meet us in room seven. Um, if you're just interested, if, if uh, children, adults, we need everybody. All hands on deck. We're so excited. Okay, so we think that's it. Just a few more things. If you are in need or know of someone in need for Thanksgiving or uh, for Christmas, because we're taking signups for both now, please see myself or Sister Jocelyn, and we can take your information down if you need a, if you need resources, or if you know someone in need of resources. If you'd like to donate, um, you, I'm sure you can see Sister Jocelyn, Sister uh, Minister Audrey, um, but if you need resources, please see myself or Sister Jocelyn for either Thanksgiving or Christmas, because we are taking signups for both. Thank you. Oh, okay, I'm going to pray out. All right, <laughs> so let's go ahead and stand, and we're going to close in prayer. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the wonderful word that uh, was given today. We ask that you bless Bishop, um, continue to anoint him and fill him and be everything that he and Pastor LaWanda need, God. Um, as they give to us, God, we ask that you continue to fill them, God, and allow us to give back into them, God. God, we just ask that you allow this word to rest on us, to let us meditate on it and not allow it to leave us, God, until we meet again next week, God. We thank you for everything you're doing. We pray a hedge of protection over everyone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. We love you. Show the love of the Lord. And please thank you for joining us here on our live stream at New Birth Christian Center. It is our hope and prayer that this is an exciting, anointed, and revitalizing worship experience for you. When you are able, please be sure to visit us in person at New Birth Christian Center located at 1234 William Moss Boulevard in the beautiful city of Stockton, California. You can also visit us online through Facebook and our website, newbirthstockton.com. Please be sure to like, comment, and share this video with your friends and family all over the globe. Stay connected to us because with your prayer and support, we can take this wonderful gospel from the neighborhood to the nations.